So we, we are not patriots, but we're not rebels either. So look at 1 Timothy chapter 2. So we've seen the Christian response toward patriotism. So it's mostly negative, you notice. So we don't believe in that kind of stuff. But that doesn't mean that we're rebels either. There is something that we're supposed to do for our country, actually. So let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 2. As a matter of fact, it's for any country. It's for any country. So we're supposed to do that. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 2. All right. 1 Timothy chapter 2, and we will look at verses 1 through 3. All right, nobody, will, nobody likes what Bill Clinton did, Obama, or other presidents, but look what the Bible says at 1 Timothy 1. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and look, giving of thanks, see that? Thanksgiving, giving of thanks be made for all men. Who does that include? For who? Kings. And for what? All that are in authority. No way, no way. That certain politician is actually a homosexual. That certain politician is a Democrat. That certain politician, yeah, he's a Republican, but he messed up right here. That, no, 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 that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says we are supposed to pray for all of them. Why? What's the reason? The reason for prayers is obviously not because we condone their corruption or wrong things that they've done. It's because of what? that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. See that? Now, I don't know about you, okay? But I still want to live a peaceable life with what this country has given to me right. so that I can keep street preaching, having the freedom to street preach, knock on doors, tell people how to get saved. And y'all, you know, y'all get upset about the government restricting things, but let's be honest too, the stuff that you put on YouTube and on the internet, you better thank God they at least give you the freedom to put that kind of stuff, all right? So the thing is, is that that's why uh, we lead a, a quiet and peaceable life. That's why we pray for all of them. I believe that's why the Lord has still given us the freedom and the opportunity to keep preaching and teaching. Why? Because the agents out there don't see us as rebels, see? So a lot of the people contact me and they watch the stuff that I put online and they're like, oh my goodness, they didn't arrest you yet and stuff like that. And I'm like, no. You know why? Because when you show their innocence that you're harmless, see? That's why they'll have a tendency to leave you be so far, so far. So that's why 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, that's why we got to do this. Even though you don't like that, look at verse 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of who? God. God. Look, I'm not doing that for Hillary. I'm not doing that for Obama. And I'm not doing that for Trump too or anybody. You know what I'm doing that for? I'm doing that for God, for, their, for God's sake. So you got to pray, intercede. That way you can continually have the peace to serve God, etc. So yes, the whole world will fall apostate. But that doesn't mean they can take away our peace to keep giving the gospel to other people. So let's continually pray about that. Now let's look at another passage here. We're going to look at Romans chapter 13. Ooh, the forbidden chapter. No one loves Romans 13. Everyone hates Romans 13. Let's look at Romans chapter 13. Why do people dislike Romans 13? Because they claim that the government system of Romans 13 is different from the government system today. We are bound by the Constitution, not by a tyrannical dictator. That's what they'll argue. Come on. If you study conspiracies, you're not going to even argue that. Because let's be honest, you conspiracy uh, fans out there. All right? Can you really argue, use that as an argument? Is America going by the con God-given Constitution today? Is everything fair in our government today? No. All right? Whatever the guy who pounds the gavel says, it's done. Whatever so-and-so says in the office, it's done. You got executive orders as well, okay? Even you guys will admit that we don't live in that kind of freedom anymore, see? So it's not the country where we're bound by the Constitution, etc. It's, it's all tyrannical dictatorship, all right? Now, I'm familiar with the laws and rules, too, so there are con so I'm not saying legally, legally, that we're not under the Constitution, etc. Constitution is a very powerful argument. But you got to realize this, when you go to more complicated areas in the legal matters,
those guys studied all the rules. They can interpret. They can find circumstances to interpret the Constitution. And the judge can make the determination of what he thinks the Constitution should interpret. Ken Hoven thought he got it memorized and he could get away with it. Don't work, man, no matter how many legal rules you know. See? Let's look at Romans chapter 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be, now look at this, are what? Ordained of God. When Obama, okay, you're not going to like this, but when Obama was president, that was ordained by God. When Trump became president, that was ordained by God. And every so-and-so back in the last centuries, including Nero, the guy who burned Christians. Now let's keep reading right here. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Look at that, see? You resist government authority, then you receive condemnation. So damnation, what that word means is that you're not, it doesn't mean like you lose your salvation. It basically means, if you look up the English word damn, it means to be punished, to be judged, see? So yeah, when you resist, then you do get judged. I mean, Ken Hoven paid a heavy price, didn't he? Let's keep reading. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he, you won't believe this, is Gene Kim a minister of God? You might say yes, but guess what? So is Trump and Obama, for he is the minister of God, in thee for good. But if thou do that which is a evil, be afraid. I know you don't like that, but that's what God says. See, that's what God says. Now keep reading uh, verse 5. Wherefore ye must needs be subject. Why should you be subject? Not only for wrath. See, it's not just the wrath of the government, but also what? Conscience sake. If you get punished by the government and that, and that violated the Bible, you should, the Holy Spirit should trouble your conscience. That's something you got to think about before you resist the higher power. Now, does that mean that we have to obey whatever uh, the government says? Absolutely not. But before I explain, let's look at verse 6 now. Taxes. Oh, taxes, taxes, taxes. For, for this cause pay tribute also. Is that what it says? For they are what? Oh, my goodness. No way. It did not say that. Yes, it did. Yes, it did say that. For they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. So we have to pay taxes. Why do we pay our taxes? Because you got to realize this. Yes, the taxation, a lot of it is crooked, but I also have to add this thing too. When you, when you get to a government position, it's not easy to get there. You have to work really hard in school. You have to go through all this process. And when you're in the office, you know, that's a lot of work you got to understand. So the thing is, in that part, honor to whom honor, credit to whom credit is due. Not the other stuff where they're corrupt and messed up in. We don't. But in the other good parts that they do for you, you should. You should. Credit to whom credit is due on the good parts. Isn't that what the verse says on what is good, on what is good? That's why we do it. You got to understand that. Let's also turn to... Matthew chapter 17, Matthew chapter 17, Matthew 17. Now, does that mean that we should obey whatever Mr. President, Mr. King so-and-so says? Well, obviously not, because why were their Christians persecuted by their kings, right? Because they disobeyed the king. In what account? That's why you got to memorize Acts 5, 29. We're not going to turn there, but this is a good verse to memorize. We ought to obey who? God, rather than who? Men. That's the point, see? We obey our leaders when it doesn't violate God. That's the point. If there is something in the Bible that clearly violates it, then we disobey the leader. But if it doesn't, then we are supposed to obey them in all kinds of stuff, no matter how much they add in the taxation, no matter um, how they do the rules, etc., no matter if you don't like it, even if you have to sign some form, you know, that way, you know, everyone has social security card, ID, etc., so that they all keep tabs on us, etc. I know we don't like that, all right? 
if you get yourself tased at the border so that you can get millions of views, okay, you're not a good pastor. You're just an idiot. Okay? You're just an idiot. You just, the thing is this, whether we like it or not, okay, so that's so-and-so. If he got tased, he deserved it. Okay? You know why? Because that has nothing to do with the Bible about checkpoints and all that kind of stuff. That has nothing to do with that. Okay? So the thing is, is that we have to obey God if it's clear in the Bible. And if it's clear in the Bible, then we violate whatever man says. But if it doesn't say it, then for crying out loud, whether you like it or not, you have to go through all that stupid process and go through that stupid process. Let's also look at Matthew chapter 17, verse 24. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 24. Now, does that mean that God thinks that taxation is a good thing? No, of course not. A lot of the things that the government set up, the rules, etc., the voting process, whatever, I mean, all, all of it, we don't like it. None of it is good. But the thing is, is that, see, it's not something that violates the Bible clearly. So you're going to have to do it. You know, one thing I learned about human nature is that they don't like authority. Yeah. So then what they do is that they always say, can you give me a clear verse why I have to do that? Amen. You got to realize this. Whatever authority God has given to you, such as the parents are the authority to the children, the husband is the authority to the wife, the pastor is the authority to the church, the masters are the authority to the slaves in the Bible back then, actually. And then the government leaders, the authority to the regular people. You know what mankind's problem is? Is they just don't like to submit. And they'll use a spiritual excuse to justify their rebellion. So the thing is this, is that, look, no one likes it, all right? Because they want to do what they want to do. And that's a sign of a rebellious nature. It makes me wonder if God didn't tell you to receive Christ for your salvation, but he told you, I want you to stand on your head to get saved. Are you going to say, oh, why would God do that? Uh, it just makes me look foolish. Why do I have to look like a clown? See, that's the problem with people, is that they have a rebellious nature. The thing is, it doesn't matter what the command is, or how dumb the demand is, or how much you don't like it. God, what he wants is, will you obey no matter what? And he'll give you a flawed person just to test your obedience. That's the thing. Because he knows if you can't even obey man, you're going to have problems obeying God. Because what God will demand out of your life is a lot of things to take you to the next level and stage of obedience. But you can't do that. So the thing is this, unless it's clear from the Bible, then you disobey. But if it's not, it doesn't matter how much you don't like the command and rule. You've got to obey. No one likes it. But see, that's a sign of a rebellious fleshy nature that you care about, you love yourself more. See, you love yourself more. And that's the pride and arrogance of man is we live in a selfish society. We want to do what we want to do. That's right. That's the problem. And if you can't tolerate what I want to do, then you're intolerant bigot. Isn't that what we ended up with today? See? So that's the problem is that, look, what God likes, that's why he'll deliberately send these people to test your obedience. What did God tell Abraham? Sacrifice your son. Don't you think Abraham had every spiritual excuse in the world? Or did he? Yeah, he could have done that, but what did he do? He just shut his mouth and obeyed God no matter what, right? So the thing is this, is that, look, if it's not clear from the Bible, it doesn't matter how much you don't like the command. Just do it, all right? Just do it. That's the thing about mankind is that they are just rebellious. They don't submit to authority. Let's look at Matthew chapter 17, verse 24 through 27. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, Doth not your master pay tribute? He saith, Yes. And when he was coming to the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, So look, Jesus, he wasn't agreeing about the taxation either. Look what Jesus says. What thinkest thou, Simon, of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute, of their own children or of strangers? Peter saith unto him, Of strangers. Jesus saith unto him, Then are the children free. See, that Jesus was criticizing, too, about the rules of the government. But Jesus, see that Jesus Christ, who is God Almighty, yet what? He humbled himself to become a man. He submitted to some pagan, wicked emperor. Verse 27, notwithstanding, lest we should offend them. See that? Go thou to the sea, and cast an hook, and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and thee. 
Jesus didn't agree with the rules of the government. But guess what? He submitted. Look, if God Almighty can do that with some pagan Roman emperor, and we're supposed to follow Jesus' example, are you saying you're better than Jesus Christ? That, will, that can be a sermon right there on obedience right there. So Matthew chapter 17, verse 24 through 27. Pray, taxation, submitting. Let's also look at one more passage. Daniel 1. Daniel 1. Now, you're going to come across a certain area. Now, this is important. If there's a certain area where you feel like, now, you've got to pay attention to this part. Christians are just so ignorant. If there's a certain gray area, okay, gray area, where you believe that it's not the right thing to do against your Christian belief, so you have to violate the government rule. But there's no clear verse either that says it's a sin. What are you supposed to do in that case, right? So this is what you need to do. Before you resist the government power, you got to do this first. And I know Christians don't do this because they just want to do what they want to do. Look, if you want to sacrifice your freedom and your ministry and the fruits that the Lord has given to you, then be my guest. But me, I'm not going to do that. I still had so many people saved through online because at least I have the common sense on what to upload and how to post it and what I should say and what I shouldn't say, etc. Okay? Let's look at Daniel 1. Look at verse 5. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. So he gives them these pagan meats to eat. Now, what does Daniel do? Verse 8. It's a sin. It's wrong. No, I resist it. No, look what. Look at verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now, God had brought Daniel into, look at this, what? Favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. Look at that. Finding favor with a government leader. He must have done a lot of compromising and good testimony while not violating the Bible, biblical principles, to do that. And what you Christians lack is wisdom. And you need to use wisdom with these people. You know what we do with the cops? You know, a lot, some of us do, before we street preach at this big parade and then, you know, a bunch of liberals get mad at us. We go to the officer and say, oh yeah, Romans 13, you know, uh, we believe in obeying the higher power and, you know, the Bible says 1 Timothy 2, we pray for you. And then the cops, they see us as, you know, these guys aren't troublemakers. And then we preach whatever we want and then, you know, all these guys get mad and then the cops leave us alone. See that? You got to use wisdom for crying out loud. Because look what Daniel did. Uh, he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank, right? Verse 9, we read that. Verse 10, And the prince of the eunuch said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king, who hath appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sort? Then shall he make me endanger my head to the king. Now look what Daniel says in verse 12. He doesn't say, oh, it's wrong, I don't care. No, look at verse 12. Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat, as thou seest. Deal with thy, deal with the, thy servants. So he consented to them in this manner. So notice right here that Daniel made a compromise. He says, look, just try us out for ten days. It won't hurt, right? Just try us out for ten days and see what happens. If he didn't compromise that, you know what would have happened? He probably would have been in prison and probably would have been executed, and you would not get the book of Daniel today. The greatest prophecy next to the book of Revelation. By the way, Daniel, he was second in command, right, at the kingdom of Persia. You think that he was dumb like many people today in blasting Persia, etc.? No, he had to use wisdom. He had to use wisdom. Dr. Uckman, he was doing street preaching, and one time he almost got arrested, and obviously the cops had no legal grounds to arrest him. But they just kept, you know, harassing uh, Dr. Uckman's students in street preaching. So you know what he did? He didn't just, like, fight it out and then accuse them, etc. 
What he did was he made a compromise with them. You just leave us alone and we won't be street preaching uh, during the winter season. And we'll be preaching during the summer season. That's what they did. That's why they had the freedom. <laughs> all of Pensacola, every corner you go to, you see a street preacher. Ain't that a blessing? It's a blessing that they see all those street preachers. And they had to wear these orange vests. Oh, I don't like wearing this. It makes me look like a clown. Well, because they wore it, they still had the freedom to do it, see? So if you're in a median lane, you had to wear an orange vest. So see, you got to do that. And that's why Dr. Ruckman was able to have the freedom to continue his ministry. And I wouldn't be teaching to you people online if he was arrested a long time ago. So the thing is this, is that I hope that today's teaching makes you understand the importance of how we're supposed to treat our country and honor them. And even you have to use a lot of wisdom to compromise in something where it does not violate your Christian faith. If you fail to do that, don't blame me when you get arrested and your fruits come to nothing and your ministry is shut down and closed. Don't blame me for that one. And don't uh, and don't blame the uh, don't blame anything else and say why God did this happen and think you're being persecuted for righteousness sake. Don't get that kind of attitude. All right? You just wasted your years of ministry serving God with the opportunity he's given to you.